Remove the control air line and loosen the small flange mounting bolts. Now you can remove the butterfly valve with the actuator from the small flanges. Please avoid damaging the O-ring groove edges when removing it. You can also dismantle the proximity switch bracket if necessary. This leaves the proximity switches connected and in set position. Loosen the two socket head screws and remove them together with the lock washers. The actuator can now be removed from the valve. Begin by removing the stem adapter that is loosely attached to the flap disc stem. This will only be found on valve sizes up to DN40 or 1.5 inch. Loosen bolts of the casing flange in order to separate flanges and take out the flap disc with seat. Remove the outside O-rings of the casing flange with a pointed tool. Disassemble the bearings on the two ends of the flap disc shaft. Put the flap disc in the opened position to remove the seat. Press the seat together on the outside diameter and pull it over the short end of the shaft and finally over the long end of the shaft. Lubricate upper and lower stem on the flap disc. When mounting the seat seal, first insert the long end of the disc shaft into the seat seal. Then press the seal together on the outside diameter and pull it over the short end of the disc shaft. The flap disc can be secured by clamping the square end of the shaft in a vise. A mounting tool may be required. Mount both sliding bearings onto the ends of the shaft. The next step is to position the flap disc with seat between the two casing flanges. The flap disc should be in an open position. Please remember to position the actuator mounting holes of the flange on the same side as the squared end of the flap disc. Lubricate the threads of the flange bolts. Tighten the nuts until there's a gap approximately 1 or 2 mm or 1 16th of an inch wide between the casing flanges. Use a manual handle or wrench to open and close the valve 3 or 4 times for aligning the flap seal. Finally, locate the flap disc into the closed position, mount the blind plug and finish tightening the flange bolts.
Insert the two outside O-rings of the casing flanges into the groove. A little bit of grease helps fix the O-rings. If the valve is DN40 or one and a half inch or smaller, the stem adapter has to be reattached to the square end of the flap disc. Unscrew the threaded plug on the upper side of the actuator and also the air connection on the bottom side. Loosen the two hexagonal screws and remove the target for the proximity switches. Use a punch tool and hammer to remove the locating pin. The coupling can now be removed from the drive. Position the actuator centrally in press. Use the press to force the cylinder face about 10 mm or 3 8 of an inch downward with a pipe of approximately 50 mm of diameter. Please make sure there's enough press travel to completely relieve the spring tension. Remove the snap ring with a screwdriver. Relieve spring tension via press. The complete actuator including the piston rotating sleeve and bottom of the cylinder can now be removed from press. Remove the compression spring and upper spring guide from the cylinder. Next remove the cylinder from the piston and also the lower spring guide. Use a simple screwdriver to disassemble the snap ring. A plastic hammer may be required to remove the sleeve from the piston. Remove a slide bearing from one side and then the complete bolt and slide bearing from the other side. Make sure that the two slide bearings are not lost. Use a pointed tool to remove the outer O-ring from the cylinder. And also the O-ring located between the guide bearings. Secure the cylinder in a vise and remove the two guide bearings with a hammer and screwdriver. The seal kit contains all seal and guide parts, as well as the list of spare parts and an explanatory drawing. Remove any old seals from your work area 
to prevent accidentally using them. Set the guide bearings into the bottom of the cylinder still clamped in the vise. The drive spindle can be used as a mandrel to install the guide bearings. First install the O-ring between the guide bearings and the larger O-ring on the outside of the cylinder. Next mount the outside O-ring on the lower piston first and then the two O-rings that seal towards the sleeve. Lubricate the sliding surfaces of the piston, rotating sleeve and bolt. Install the lubricated slide bearing onto the shaft before mounting in the piston. Then position the through hole of the rotating sleeve and piston so you can insert the shaft through the assembly. Lubricate the surfaces of the slide bearing and install the other end of the shaft. After mounting the shaft, lubricate both O-rings on the piston and the inside surface of the sleeve. Then push the sleeve over the piston and use a screwdriver to mount the snap ring. Push the lower spring guide onto the piston. It is necessary to lubricate all sliding surfaces before assembling the piston together with the rotating sleeve and lower cylinder. Push the upper spring guide into the cylinder. Lubricate the inside wall of the cylinder and insert the compression spring. Position the actuator cylinder with the compression spring centrally on a press. Insert the piston assembly and place the snap ring onto the bottom of the cylinder. Use a pipe to press the cylinder downward until you can mount the snap ring into the groove provided for it.
Position the coupling making sure that the flat surface of the coupling is correctly aligned to tapped hole of the air connection. The coupling is fastened with the taper pin, punch and hammer. Position the bracket making note of the air hole location. Then position the target onto the drive. Apply thread lubricant to the two hexagonal screws and fasten the bracket with screws and corresponding lock washers. Finally the air connection and thread plug can be tightened in place. The flap disc has to be located in the desired position before mounting the actuator onto the valve. For normally closed, the flap disc should be closed and for normally open, the flap disc should be open. The notches on the square of the shaft reflect the position of the flap disc. If normally closed, the flap disc should be positioned parallel to the target. Fasten the actuator onto the butterfly valve with the two socket head screws and lock washers provided. The threads should be lubricated prior to assembly. First, the bolt threads should be lubricated. Then mount the proximity switch bracket with the hexagonal screws that you disassembled when removing the butterfly valve from the small flanges. The proximity switches should not require adjustment, but should be checked after assembly. Lubricate the two outside O-rings of the casing flange and insert the valve into the pipeline. Locate the valve position with the flange bolts and tighten. Finally, the control airline can be reconnected to the actuator. The PTFE laminated flap seal is supplied with the flap disc already mounted. Position the seal between the casing flanges in the open position. Please remember to position the actuator mounting holes of the flange on the same side as the squared end of the flap disc. The edges of the seat seal should be carefully pushed into the casing flange. Lubricate the threads of the hexagonal screws and tighten the nuts until there is a gap approximately 1 to 2 mm or 1 16th of an inch wide between the casing flanges. Use a manual handle or wrench to open and close the valve three or four times for aligning the flap seal. Finally, locate the flap disc into the closed position, mount the blind plug and finish tightening the flange bolts. Remove the hexagonal screw in the handle. Remove the handle and then the positioning piece. Also remove the stem adapter for valves up to and including DN40 or one and a half inch. Begin by setting the adapter onto the square stem for valves up to and including DN40 or one and a half inch. Then mount the positioning piece. Set the handle onto the opened valve. 
please make sure that the handle is parallel to the flap disc. Fasten the handle with a hexagonal screw. Turn the handle a number of times to test the valve function. Loosen the flathead screw and lock washers to remove the handle. Set the handle onto the square stem, making sure that the handle is parallel to the flap disc. Fasten the handle with the flathead screw and the corresponding lock washer. Turn the handle a number of times to test the valve function. Position the support and coupling, making sure that the coupling is in the correct position. Fasten the coupling with a taper pin using a punch and a hammer. Lubricate the screw threads and fasten the bracket with the hexagonal screws and corresponding lock washers. Then tighten the air connection and thread plug.